Hey everybody, today we had a customer drop off his Craftsman 24 inch uh, snowblower. It's a, uh, let's see here, let's see, we can see what size engine it has in it. It has a 208cc overhead valve engine. Um, he put gas in it, he said it wouldn't start. It doesn't look like it's been used hardly at all, um, barely anywhere in the augers uh, so I haven't even tried to start it yet nothing I know he said he put gas in it so it already has fresh gas in it we need to get a sample of the gas let's take in the well the gas looks pretty clean so we're gonna go from there we're gonna leave that gas in there uh, he's got the the safety key safety pin over on the side of the machine. We'll have to take that off and put it in. I'm going to extension cord out here and we'll try to start it up to see what's going on with it. All right, I did check the oil, but I'll show you all. The oil is super clean. This machine does not look like it's been run at all. So I got my extension cord plugged in. Uh, I put the key in. Let's go ahead and set the choke. Let's hit the primer bulb about five times. Uh, the choke is on. Let's give it a hit. Let's try it again. Okay, not even a hit. And on this machine here, the spark plug is all the way over here. So we need to check for spark, be sure we have spark. Let me get a spark tester and we'll check for spark next. All right, so I have hooked up my spark tester to it and run it just to ground instead of running it back to the plug. There's no sense in doing that. Let's go ahead and push the start button if I can find it and we'll see if this light flashes okay the light is flashing we do have spark we'll go ahead and hook this back up and unfortunately these things don't have an air cleaner so i bet you the carburetor is clogged up the carburetor is right here underneath the machine so we're gonna have to take this cover off so in my previous video, people have been complaining that they uh, have not showed how to get the choke knob off and the throttle knob off. Oh, you know something? I had it on off. Let's try this again. Let's choke it. Okay, still nothing. Even though I had that on stop, I wasn't paying attention, so that's run. Uh, still nothing as you can see we have spark we don't have any we most likely don't have any fuel it's very hard to spray any fuel into these to get them started so what I was saying before is people have been complaining that I'm not showing how to pull the choke knob off because people can't get their choke knobs off and their throttle knobs off so let me go get a screwdriver and I'll show you how to take those knobs off Alright, I know people are already probably saying that I should pull the spark plug out and check the spark plug, but this machine's just too new and I do believe the carburetor's clogged up. So, to get, there is no screw down the center of this choke rod. If I'm not mistaken, this just takes and pops right off. I use two screwdrivers to pry it off, it comes right off. Um, now, on the, the throttle rod, You don't want to mark this up for customers. So I take and wrap it with a rag and I'll use a pair of pliers and I'll grab it. And pull it off. And this is on there very tight. So there, that's how you get the throttle knob off and the choke knob. The throttle knob is a lot harder to get off. So now we're going to need a 10 millimeter socket 
to get the bolt out down here, here, and here. And there's another one up in here. I'm gonna need an extension. And then we should be able to get this cover off so I could get a look, a closer look at the carburetor. This one here actually has a bracket that runs underneath the float bowl. So it's kind of hard to get the float bowl off with all these covers on. So let me get this next cover off and I'll be back. And of course, every machine's different that I work on, but they're pretty much all the same. But I do not believe this has a, a uh, fuel shutoff. So that is good. Shut that loose. And you lift up the cover. <clears throat> now inside here, if you really wanted to get this thing completely off of here, there's a bunch of connections you need to disconnect. You've got the primer bulb line right here that you can disconnect, and then the electrical connections for the uh, for the uh, for the safety switch. I think I'm just going to disconnect the if I can. You got to be careful; you don't want to break these primer bulbs. I don't think I'm going to be able to disconnect it. Let me uh, get it disconnected and I'll be right back. So I disconnected the hose to the primer bulb. These are the electrical connections. I'm just going to lay this over to the side for right now. And actually, now that I have this all disconnected, like I said, snow blowers don't have air filters because they freeze up from the snow. So this snow thrower actually gets air through this area here. So what I'm gonna do is make sure the choke is off, which I do believe it is. Yeah, now it's off. I'm gonna spray a little bit of gum cutter in here Make sure we have full throttle. Uh, try not to do this where I ruin anything. They've got all these metal shields all over this machine. Let me go ahead and hit the gas. So these are the two bolts that actually hold the carburetor on, but I want to get this choke assembly piece out if it will come off real fast. I want to see if this thing will fire with a little bit of uh, starting fluid. All right, looks like I'm going to need a Phillips screwdriver to take the top apart. Hold on, I'll be right back. Yep, like I said, the airflow comes in right here. Let me uh, get a little gum cutter in here. And let's see if it will fire up. Okay. There we go. 
it's not getting gas obviously the carburetor's clogged up i shot some gum cutter which is just like starting fluid down in the uh for the carburetor and it fired up so i'm going to go ahead and unplug the machine now i don't need that plugged in so now we're going to continue on taking the carburetor apart to get the carburetor off the machine so i've taken these this nut off and this nut off and now this should slide off This is the PVC line right here. We have to get that loose. So that piece now comes off. All right, let's see. We need a pair of pinch off pliers and we're going to pinch off the fuel tank inlet line because it is completely full. All right, so that is blocked off. Bring this clamp up. Off the fuel thing, off the, that's the fuel inlet. Now this little piece here I just noticed fell out of here. That's a spacer. You wanna put that spacer back in there. If you can get these gaskets off without ripping them, take the gaskets off. gaskets off all right so now we need to get the fuel line off of here okay fuel lines off uh so actually what I like to do too is let me put a rag right here. Let's open this up. Can you all see? No, you all can't see. Put a rag here and let's see what if we're getting fuel flow. Yes, we are getting fuel flow. The gas is nice and clean. So we'll just go ahead and block that back off. This guy might have taken and drained the gas on it. There. Come on, let go. Let me reclamp that. There we go. All right, that's reclamped. So now, on the carburetor, to get the carburetor out of here, you have the linkages that run to the governor. There's a spring. So to get these disconnected, you have to slide the carburetor forward. And once the carburetor is to a certain point, this uh, line is driving me crazy. Once you get to a certain point out, then this rod will pop out. This is the spring. There's only one hole for the spring. So it'll slide out. You don't want to let that go flying. So now the carburetor's off. The gas gets stuck to the carburetor. We're going to have to get that off. We're going to go to the workbench and we're going to continue disassembling the carburetor to find out what's wrong with it. Like I said, you can see this machine, how clean it is. This machine's never really been used. All right, well, we'll get this carburetor back on the workbench and start taking it apart. All righty, we're all set up on the workbench. Here's the carburetor. Uh, this is the choke lever here. This is the... Uh, throttle plate there and that's the choke plate there so let's uh the gasket stuck it didn't rip i don't know if we're going to soak the whole carburetor or not let's get the float bowl off and take a look and see what it looks like so it's a 10 millimeter There's the gas coming out. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Let me get a uh, 10 millimeter on an impact wrench and we'll get that off of there. There we 
go. So you also want to make sure that you remember which way the drain goes. And in here, you can see there's a bunch of nasty stuff in there that's probably clogging up the jet. That's probably why it won't run. And actually, this one does not look that bad. But like I said, in some of them, here's the drain. There can still be this much gas left in the carburetor if you just drain them and that's it. So, And see there's a piece of dirt right here and that piece of dirt there screws in here and the jet is up in there so let's see the float seem to be working yep the float seems to be working good the needle is moving up and down we're going to go ahead and take this and pull this off anyway and i'll clean the needle so you pull you pull the rod off then the float will come down and there's the needle um, that's the hole where the gas flows into the main jet, which is up in here. So let me get my screwdriver that I like using to get the, the jet out. Sometimes you need a pair of pliers. There we go, here comes the jet. There's the jet, and I don't know if the camera's going to be able to focus on this or not, but it's completely, you cannot see light through it. Let me get my other light out here. Um, can you see the brown stuff that's stuck right there? So that jet is completely clogged. Oh, and look, the emulsion tube is falling out too, which is excellent. We'll pull that out. And you can see that it also has tons of scum on it. So that needs to be cleaned. This one here, I could probably just do a mini clean on. Um, I, I did buy the new, uh, a new gallon of the gunk parts cleaner. This stuff works really good. But this one here, I might just be able to do a mini clean on. We'll go ahead and clean all the stuff out. Clean the jet out. Clean the emulsion tube out. Um, well, there is some scum up in there, up where the needle and the emulsion tube goes. We need to clean out. This carburetor's got a lot of plastic parts on it and the gasket stuck. So I really don't want to soak this in the carburetor cleaner. Sorry, plastic parts, plastic parts, plastic parts. I really don't want to soak this in the, in the parts cleaner. But I don't want it melting the plastic parts. Now I could probably put it in there just up to this point but I'll just use gum cutter to clean this out. And uh, we'll go ahead and we'll get all this stuff cleaned up and wiped off. There's the O-ring for the float, take that off. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this open. We'll go ahead and put the emulsion tube in, the jet in, the float bowl in, and let that stuff soak. And I'll get some gum cutter. Oh, there's one more thing. We've got the... Uh, We've got the idle speed jet up here underneath here. So what we have to do with this is we have to screw this in all the way and count the turns. So we know how many turns to put it out. So let's go. There's half. There's one. One and a half. Two. Two and a half. Three. Three and a half. Four. Four and a half. Five. Uh, let's call that five and a quarter. So we know that there was out five and a quarter turns. We'll go ahead and pop this all the way back out. Five and a quarter. Five and a quarter. I got my Sharpie. And I'm just going to write it down. Five and a quarter. So I just wrote it down on the workbench over here so I know. So then once you get that plastic piece out, this is just the idle stop that comes out. Underneath here is another air bleed that you gotta pop up with a screwdriver. And inside here, 
there is a another bleed hole and with if this jet is clogged the snow blower will surge wah 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 and i'll tell you what it looks like it is clogged let's take a look inside here and yeah it's a little bit little bit green a little bit brown so we'll like i said i don't want to soak this body because it's got all these plastic parts we'll take and use some spray gum cutter and clean this up and i'll go ahead and put the float the jet the emulsion tube i don't want to put this in there i'll just clean this up because this is plastic and uh, we'll just put that stuff in the carburetor cleaner and clean that stuff up let me get this stuff soaking and we'll come back and I'll show you how I clean the rest of it up and reassemble. All right, everything's been soaking in the carburetor cleaner for a while. And here is the carburetor. I took my favorite stuff, gum cutter, two plus two gum cutter, and I sprayed up in this part of the carburetor, in that jet, in that, well, actually it's probably not a jet, it's considered an air bleed. An air bleed here, an air bleed here down this hole where that air bleed does go for the idle speed and I've cleaned this all up and then I took compressed air and blew it all dry so this piece is all ready the choke piece here this is the needle I have cleaned off the needle with gum cutter that looks good I've taken the float rod and cleaned it off and now this is what the bolt that holds the float bowl on and I've cleaned that off so everything here has been cleaned off now with this one air bleed, I haven't done anything to yet um, except wipe it down. So what I have here is I have a set of torch tip cleaning tools. And this is what I'm going to use to run through this air bleed to get it back open. So I'm going to run that through there a few times. And then what I'll do is I'll take the gum cutter. And I'll spray through it to make sure it's completely open and cleaned up. You can do this with compressed air also. So that's all set. So let's come over and open up this. Yeah, in the beginning, this stuff looks like honey. And then eventually it starts turning dirtier and dirtier and dirtier. And you won't be able to see through it. It doesn't have any way to hook the basket. So let that drip dry for a little bit. There are parts. I'll just go ahead and dump my parts out. Put that back in there. Put the lid back on. All right, and there are our float bowl, our emulsion tube, and our jet. What I'll do now is I'll, since I have them on rags, I'll just go ahead and spray them down with a little bit of gum cutter. And I'll take a clean rag, the cleanest rag I have. So here's the float bowl. As you can see, it's basically spotless. Here's the emulsion, there's the emulsion tube, wiping that off. And then the jet. What I also like to do too is, is take the gum cutter and go ahead and rinse the stuff off really, really good. Let me go get a cleaner rag. All right, here we go. So I've sprayed this off with gum cutter wiping out with a rag that is super clean that's ready to go let's grab the jet okay it doesn't look like a complete it, it the jet is still blocked so i'm gonna take my torch tip cleaning tool let's see if i can get a good angle on it so you can see the stuff push out of it well it didn't really come out there we go using the torch tip cleaning tool and if you want to go oh that poked me look at that nice got to be careful with these things if you want to go up at size the right size you can do that too so now that I've got that open I'll take the gum cutter and I'll go ahead and I'll spray it out Then 
Try to get all the dirt out. Can you can you all see light through it now? Can you see the light through it? It's open now. I'm going to take compressed air and blow that through too. Now with the emulsion tube, I'm going to do the same thing. The emulsion tube has um, one, two, three, four, five, six holes. And then over here, it's got seven holes. And I can see that that one's clogged up right there. So I just start taking the tip cleaner and running through all the holes. And I'll, after I'm done, I'll blow it out with gum cutter again. And uh, I know that one was clogged up. I will clean these up and I'll spray gum cutter through it to make sure that all the passages are open. And it'll, it'll kind of like blow out like a fountain and then come take compressed air and do the same thing. I don't want to take it do it too close to the camera. I already cooked, took and started melting my camera. But like I said, what I'll do is I take my gum cutter and I put it in the end and I'll spray it. See how, it's, see how the fluid's coming through all of them? That's a good sign. Ooh, I'm going to take and get some compressed air. We're gonna blow everything out one more time. After I get done blowing everything out with some compressed air, we'll come back and we'll reassemble. Alrighty, I've got everything cleaned. I took the emulsion tube and cleaned out all the ports with the tip cleaner. The jet, same thing. I found the correct size for the jet and cleaned it out. So let's go ahead and start reassemble. So first thing is Take the carburetor body, take the emulsion tube. This end goes in first. The flat end is at the bottom, so it just slides in like so. Then your jet goes in with the screwdriver slot out. Put that in. That gets tightened up. Tight. All right. Now, sometimes your needle will fall off your float, so you, the spring goes in between the float and the needle like it is. Wipe this all off so it's ready to go. What I like to do is I like taking the float rod and putting it in there about that far, and then you can put this in and hold it and put the float rod in. So there's that. All right, so now we got to put the float bowl O-ring back in place. And now we take the float bowl and put it on. Put the float bowl retaining nut and bolt in. So now what we got to do is we got to make sure that we have the drain pointing the proper way. So this is the part that goes toward the machine and it sits like this. So I, I left this loose a little bit so I can easily rotate this to that point. That's where it needs to be. 10 millimeter wrench, tighten that up. That's good. This, I already took the torch tip cleaning and ran through that. I blew everything off with the air blower. So now there's a flat spot there and this has two flat spots. It doesn't matter which way the flat spot go, as long as the flat spots go in, you just push it into the hole, make sure it's somewhat lined up, and uh, push it back in, and it went all the way back in. Now we take the idle stop screw, put it back in, that's what keeps this piece from jumping out so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna run this in all the way until it stops there we go now we're gonna go five and a quarter turns out so we'll start from 
there. It, it really doesn't have a slot. It's like a half moon. I don't have the half moon screwdriver that fits it. So we'll just use the flat blade. So let's start here. There's a half. There's one. One and a half. Two. Two and a half. Three. Three and a half. Four. Four and a half. Five and a quarter, which I do believe was right about there. And what that does is that keeps, that's where the idle speed works right there. All right, so there's the carburetor reassembled. We just got to put it back on the machine. I had to put the machine outside because I had some other work to do. Let me go get the uh, machine and we'll start putting the carburetor back on. All right, I got the machine back in. We'll start putting it back together. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this hose off because it's kind of getting in my way and driving me crazy. So. Since we didn't rip this gasket, this gasket's still in good shape, we're going to reuse it. So, on here, we're going to start to slide the carburetor back in. And can you see the linkage piece? You really can't see. Let me pull the camera up. So, I can lift this up. I've got to slide it a little bit farther. You go ahead and you insert this in there and now when you slide it in it'll hold it then you're going to need a little pair of needle nose to hook the spring now that is hooked up now we can go ahead and push this back into where it belongs and um i've already here's the fuel line right here and you can see that i already took and flushed some of the fuel through the fuel line so I know I'm getting clean gas out. I'm gonna go ahead and reconnect the fuel line up. Of course, the pinch, pinch off pliers are in my way. I'm just gonna go ahead and get them out of the way for now and finish hooking up the fuel line. All right, um, fuel line's hooked up. I'd like to push it on just a hair more. Let me put you all back in. Let's see. All right, there's the fuel line there. Let's be sure it's pushed on all the way. It is. Use your pair of pliers to put the clamp back down. Now, there we go. All right. So now the next thing is there's a, the gasket goes on here. I think now I better go ahead and put this back on there. And this was goes on this side. So now this is the other part of the, that, that goes on next. The two nuts go on. Let's go ahead and get those tightened up. So there are those tightened up. And you know something? I don't think maybe this doesn't route that way. Let's just put it on this side for now. We'll if we have to reroute it, we'll reroute it. Okay, so those two are tight. Now we have this other piece here that slides over top the choke and and down. So that thing, yeah, I guess it goes like that. All right, I could probably go back and check the videotape. Take pictures. You 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 have everybody has a phone. Take pictures so you know how everything goes back together. And I've got a screw that goes in there. Screw that goes in that side. All right. So I know that this was up there like this. This wire connection was in this one. So now, 
we got to set this over here. Let's see, I'm going to tuck this underneath. I'm hooking up the primer bulb hose now. Trying to hook up the primer bulb hose. Okay, primer bulb hose is hooked up. And now... Position this back on oh, the throttle. Let's move the throttle there. See if it comes back through the, the hole. There we go. Okay, there's different size bolts. There's two long and two short. The two short ones go over here, and the two long ones went on the other side. started so we'll start at the bottom one here and there's that one and there's this one and then there's one up here let me go get the choke knob and the throttle knob They just push on. That's choke. That's non-choke. As you see, it just pushed on. Same with this. There's an up and a down. And it just... That's it. It just gets pushed on. That's ready. That's ready. All right, let me go position this thing outside. And we'll see if it will start. All right, so here we go. Throttle on full choke on full. We'll hit the primer bulb like three times. Okay, maybe three more. A little too close to the building. I can smell the gas now. I guess I didn't need to choke it. I guess I didn't need to choke it, so let's go ahead and put it back on rabbit, no choke. Now this is one of the machines that might need to be choked every time you need to start it back up. But there you go everybody. That's how you get your Craftsman snowblower working after you leave gas in it. The carburetor was clogged up. We cleaned the carburetor out. 
really wasn't that dirty but we got all the ports clean it starts up it runs good now um all right i want to thank everybody for watching uh please subscribe you can always do that down there in that corner please give me a thumbs up if you like what i'm doing this is a pretty long video and it's pretty complete everybody's complaining about they can't get the choke knob off show you how to do that in this one the uh throttle knob show you how to get that one off so this one's ready to go all right everybody thanks for watching